Hi everybody, Miss Hamill here for your fourth review for your, your biology EOC. Today we will be talking about cellular energy, so photosynthesis and respiration. You need to understand the role of ATP in transferring energy within the cell. You need to explain the relationship between ADP and ATP. You need to understand the product and reactants to photosynthesis and cellular respiration. You need to understand the importance of light and photosynthesis. You need to understand the process of cellular re respiration, both aerobic and anaerobic cellular respiration. And you need to understand how photosynthesis and cellular respiration are related. So the first thing we're going to talk about is cellular energy using ATP and ADP. So here is a great little um, structure right here and it shows you what happens. ATP is a three phosphate molecule. So there are three phosphates when we talk about ADP. And then with ADP, there are two phosphate molecules. So energy is going to be stored within the bonds of the phosphate molecules. Energy is stored and more energy is stored when we add that extra bond. So when we take ADP and we plop another phosphate on, we increase the amount of energy within that molecule. ATP is going to become ADP when we break the bond between one of the phosphate molecules and energy is going to be released. And this is going to fuel the reactions within the, the body. So cellular respiration and photosynthesis are the two processes that occur that energy, um, this is called metabolism, and it's when energy is transferred from one form to the next. Photosynthesis is how we have light energy, so we get energy from the sun, and we convert it into chemical energy, or foods and sugars that we eat. This occurs in plant cells and it occurs at the chloroplast. Cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria and it occurs in plant and animal cells. And basically it takes that chemical energy and then it converts it into the ATP which is used to power the cellular work or allow the cell to function properly. And it's a cycle without plants, we would not really function. We would not be able to um, complete cellular respiration without plants in photosynthesis. So first, we've got to understand photosynthesis. And the equation for photosynthesis is really important for you to understand. You need to know the products and the reactants. So first, we'll talk about the reactants. That is what goes into the equation. And that is carbon dioxide. Whoops carbon dioxide or 6CO2 and water, 6H2O. We also have sunlight, which really drives the reaction. It forces the reaction to occur. From there, we make oxygen, 6O2, and glucose, which is C6H12O6. And if you remember from another video, Glucose is a carbohydrate and it is a sugar or food. Photosynthesis is going to occur in the chloroplast. It's a site of photosynthesis. The chloroplast absorb light energy and it converts that energy into carbon dioxide and, or I'm sorry, it converts that carbon dioxide to glucose as well as oxygen. So basically it just rearranges the, the chemical formulas. So again, this occurs in the chloroplast. They are green because of the chlorophyll. That pigment absorbs the light and then it will convert the carbon dioxide and water into sugar. Now we're gonna talk about aerobic cellular respiration. And there are three parts to aerobic cellular respiration. And you need to know the chemical formula. It is the exact opposite of photosynthesis. So we have six oxygen molecules plus sugar, C6H12O6, and we make six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules, and we make energy. So there's three steps. One, we have glycolysis. 
This occurs in the cytoplasm or the cytosol, and it makes pruvic acid. The pruvic acid molecules store energy, and it goes into the Krebs cycle, and the Krebs cycle will make ATP. And then the electron transport chain, which both the Krebs and electron transport chain happen in the mitochondria, and this makes the most energy. So we have two molecules of ATP that go into glycolysis, four are produced, so we get a net total of two in glycolysis. Then in the Krebs cycle, we have two ATP molecules produced. And then in the electron transport chain, we have 32 molecules produced. So a, th a total of 36 ATP are made. And this requires oxygen. Aerobic requires oxygen. So cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria. This is the site of cellular respiration for the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. Glycolysis is going to occur within the cytoplasm and that will happen with or without oxygen. Cellular respiration will happen in plant and animal cells. So next we have anaerobic cellular respiration and this is called fermentation. It does not require oxygen. In fact, it will occur in the absence of oxygen. So it releases energy, but it's not as efficient as aerobic respiration. It makes less ATP. It only makes two molecules of ATP. The products include carbon dioxide, lactic acid, or alcohol. And there are two types. One is alcoholic fermentation. This occurs in plants. And the other is lactic acid fermentation, which occurs in animals. So that's why we get the lactic acid buildup in our muscles when we run and we run out of oxygen, or we limit the amount of oxygen into our muscles. Again, it takes the pruvic acid molecule that is formed in glycolysis, so it af this occurs after glycolysis. It takes that pruvate, and then it makes ATP, either alcohol, lactic acid, and carbon dioxide. And the purpose of fermentation is to continue glycolysis. So those molecules will go back into glycolysis, and then once oxygen is present again, aerobic cellular respiration will occur. So the carbon cycle is basically the cycle, the flow of carbon dioxide throughout the atmosphere, the exchange of carbon dioxide from plants to animals, and back and forth. So the carbon cycle is really important. Again, the plants are going to absorb carbon dioxide. This is important because they'll absorb the unnatural carbon dioxide that we burn in our cars, in our homes, and factories. Um, and it helps to reduce the environmental impact if we have a lot of trees. So first, they will convert that CO2 to sugars. The animals are going to eat the sugars, they're going to eat the plants and they're going to basically breathe in the oxygen that comes out of the plant. So um, it's basically a, a cycle of CO2 and O2 through the atmosphere. And that is all for this review. Go ahead and take the review quiz. Good luck. You must understand the products and reactants to photosynthesis. Have a good day, study on, and good luck.